I feel very fortunate to have a career that's based around the ocean. I wake up and the ocean kind of dictates my day. If it's a beautiful day on the water, I'm going out and shooting photos. If it's stormy and, and windy and, and not good for surfing, not good for photography, I'll do something else. It, it, it really, the, the ebb and flow of the sea dictates my daily life to the T. It, it, it really is no other way around it. I mean, our, our makeup is some absurd number, a percentage of what in our body is, is water. And when we're in the water, it's, it feels like we're complete. I was 18 years old when I lost my leg to a tiger shark uh, at home in Hawaii. Um, I really knew nothing about sharks at the time, um, except that they had teeth and I lost my leg to one. After the shark attack, I, I was fortunate to have some really good friends who were um, some of the top surfers in the world, and I could start making a living just photographing them, just having fun with them, and um, went to college for it and really learned about the power of photography, how images can make people move, they can get people off the seat, they can make people cry, they can make people want to rip somebody's hair out, they can do all these emotions just with one image, and that's very powerful. I got contacted a few years later um, by a fellow shark attack survivor who wanted to know if I was interested in shark conservation work. And I guess I'm in a bit of a unique position as a shark attack survivor to have a voice, have a unique voice for them and use that irony to, as a platform. Um, it, it's sort of been a, a fun journey. I've been able to hang out with brilliant minds, people that are really passionate about sharks. And the more I learn, the more I feel compelled to help. It's, it's a natural fit to be aboard here and and not only shooting sharks, but just being around sharks and being around people who love sharks. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, Rick was up top and he was doing some turtle spotting and uh, instead of spotting a turtle, he spotted a, what we think might be a very big white shark. Um, could be the white shark from yesterday. It's checking out the buoy right now and um, it's basically circling the buoy and hopefully uh, we'll get ourselves a shark to tag. It would be nice to get a good look at this thing. To see the sharks out of the water and on the platform was surreal. It's sort of exactly, I think, the perfect scenario you can think of in your head of, of how to do things, that was what was done. The shark uh, was brought back in the water and swam off and it was a, a sign that we did our jobs right. Seeing the whole system together, everybody as passionate as can be about their own thing that they're studying and the, the razor sharp focus that they're putting into it. You know, it's raining, it's early in the morning, they're out there doing their thing, collecting science. Uh, they're not doing it for the money, they're not doing it for the fame, they're doing it under the radar and they're doing it because they want their kids, kids to be able to have a, a sea full of abundance. It's beyond studying sharks, it's really about really knowing our oceans and learning more about it. I really think uh, sharks are in a dire state and I've been in rooms with policymakers and their hands are tied without data. And science is what we need to really create change. It's a really beautiful thing to see and I'm, you can just see the passion on the people here, why they're doing it and um, it's palpable. I'm definitely going to take a lot back from this trip to want to learn more and learn more about systems and how they work together and eventually that all leads to my favorite thing and that's the shark. I came here to shoot photographs. I was hoping to get a really good shark photo and I think I'm going to go home with a lot more than a hard drive full of photos. I'm going to come home with a lot of answers that I've had and, and maybe even more questions that someday can be answered.